Reviews. The Pope's Exorcist. After seeing the trailer for, The Pope's Exorcist, I thought it would be another one of those lousy exorcism movies that have been released in recent years, but to my surprise I found a good, entertaining movie that enjoys some cliches of the exorcism movie theme. The performances are good, Russell Crowe achieves an interesting performance, while Franco Nero offers a successful performance. The script with the already boring legend, based on true events, is entertaining and has innovative moments, other interesting ones and a funny appearance of cliches, the dialogues are usually plausible but some jokingly are absurd. The soundtrack has potential and the cinematography triumphs with its chiaroscuro, achieving a good atmosphere together with the filming locations. The downside are the digital special effects that look fake in several scenes, but the gore and some old school effects are welcome. The Pope's Exorcist, isn't the best exorcism movie ever made, but it manages to stand out from most that have touched on this subject in recent years. I honestly went in there with really low expectations. I walked out of the devil in me as we've seen it all before. It's the same formula and nothing ever will live up to the original Exorcist. I think I can name three good exorcism movies. The Exorcist, Exorcist 3 and The Exorcism of Emily Rose. The plot really gets moving fast. There's no real character building but what I will say is Russell Crowe really does play the part well. It's a mixture of a great performance and a parody, whatever it is it works. It doesn't really do anything new, we've seen it all before but for some reason or another this was better than expected. Give it a watch. Like clockwork we have at least two possession films each year around the same time. Easter and Halloween it seems. They're usually hit or miss with the same cliches strewn about with maybe some attempts at being slightly innovative. While this doesn't break away too much from the plot formula, Crow's powerhouse performance doesn't amplifies the overall film to enticing levels. He has clearly found his late career niche with thrillers, horrors of late and it works extremely well. The scares are serviceable and the story is as well. Visually it's one of the best possession films I've seen in quite some time with fantastic settings and terrific practical and seedy features. This doesn't mean the cliches don't hinder it at times but overall a very welcome film for the genre. Having not seen a decent horror surface for a long time, I was quite excited to go along and see Crow's first horror flick. It says, inspired by Vatican Files, so I'm not quite sure how much of this film is factual but it's your typical possession story. However, Russell Crowe plays a solid and strong performance which makes his character very likable and most importantly believable. I also liked his character's sense of humor which Crowe played very well. Lots of cliches, although it was a good watch but not very scary. The special effects and CGI for most of the movie were very good but it did struggle during certain moments. The depth to the plot was good but I feel the other characters could have been stronger. Overall, this is a good movie and Crow carried it very well. I'd recommend that you go if you like this genre. I expected the typical horror movie with a lot of jump scares and loud sounds but actually I got to see a fairly good story with very good actors and nice scenery. So while I was watching the movie I kept forgetting that it belongs to the horror genre. I mean sure, the makeup was very creepy and also the voices of the possessed people were brought out very well but still I was more focused on the story and its ending than I usually am. Additionally it's important to point out that the actors were introduced very well and followed a good storyline. In conclusion, don't watch it as the typical bad horror movie with jump scares to keep you entertained and rather look at it as a story that's being told. Saw a few previews for this prior to watching and to be fair, wasn't expecting much, the previews didn't exactly show much or sell the film to me as such. But, being a horror fan I went to see this anyway. Inspired by the actual files of Father Gabriele Amorth, chief exorcist of the Vatican. The film follows Amorth in the summer of 1987 as he investigates a young boy's terrifying possession and ends up uncovering a centuries-old conspiracy the Vatican has desperately tried to keep hidden. I found the film to be surprisingly good. At first, it seemed to be pretty substandard stuff for a supernatural flick, though not bad. But, when it got to the middle and really broke in, it started to really show some good stuff going on and by the third act and the end, it was ace. The film's runtime isn't bad at 97 minutes, 1 hour and 37 minute, along with its pacing which is a little slow in areas, but not bad. The characters of the family could have been better developed more I think, 
but the story is good and the visuals are pretty ace too along with a great triumph of an ending. Overall, it's a great supernatural horror film. It isn't groundbreaking stuff, but what does it matter? It's got a good troop story, has some great and scary visuals and a triumph of an ending you'll love. Russell Crowe is good in this and with a great runtime, and not bad pacing, this is one supernatural flick you won't want to miss. 9 tenths. Finally, I am sick to death of horror movies that solely rely on jump scares to call it a horror, this story had a bit of weight to it and I was happy overall. So it's your average story, the chief exorcist is sent to do an exorcism, what changes this movie is that it has a nice visit to the Vatican and the church dating way back in many hidden secrets. Russell Crowe was fantastic, having an actor that can bring a certain charm to a role like this is definitely drawing. The, scenes, were all good and it took a route I wasn't expecting. The CG was good along with an effective score and good prosthetics. The supporting cast was good and I especially enjoyed Father Thomas. There were some times that felt a little unnecessary but the good outweighs the bad in this one and I can honestly see a sequel if it does well. I'd recommend going out to see it in the cinema. Is this film perfect? Absolutely not. But it is certainly a great watch. I enjoyed Crow's performance and found the humor he brought to the role spot on. It wasn't over the top, and it felt organic. The special effects and CGI for the most part were very good. With only a few moments they broke the suspension of disbelief. I enjoyed the depth to the plot and how it approached faith in general. Was nice to see some decent attempts at passing past the usual possession shtick. Overall this is a really solid film and I'd wholeheartedly recommend it to any fans of the religious horror possession genre. I was really excited about this movie and yes it is true that the movie doesn't bring anything new to the horror world but let me tell you, the movie has good tempo, it is not too much or forced, Gabriel is a very likable character and I want to know and see more from this world. People might not like that it is not that scary, or at least for me it was not. I would really want to see Russell Moore in this character, it suits him. He is funny, loyal and he knows things, but in a good way. I like the end where it was taken because it has options for other movies. Let's see what more people will rate this movie or if it will make enough money to make a second film. First of all, if you expect a serious approach or a professionally made biopic about Father Gabriele Amorth, you'll be in for a disappointment. Second of all, if you are for a formulaic fantasy story about possession with loud noises, muscle spasms, physical deformation, demon voices, levitation, explosions, shouting, blood and all sorts of other quilty pleasures as a horror fan, you should strap in, because you'll be in for a real treat. The movie has a very believable and compelling story, the pacing is just right with no dull moments, the movie stays focused from start to finish. I enjoyed the background stories with all of the flashbacks, which made a lot of sense and just made everything rock solid to support the movie premise. There are some jokes, all of them are landing and very funny because Russell Crowe is an A-list actor. All of the decor to first of all, if you expect a serious approach or a professionally made biopic about Father Gabriele Amorth, you'll be in for a disappointment. Second of all, if you are for a formulaic fantasy story about possession with loud noises, muscle spasms, physical deformation, demon voices, levitation, explosions, shouting, blood and all sorts of other quilty pleasures as a horror fan, you should strap in, because you'll be in for a real treat. The movie has a very believable and compelling story. The pacing is just right with no dull moments, fresh and modern concepts regarding religion and faith, decorations were tastefully made, filming location was very dark and eerie, no weak or unnecessary characters, there are even some smart mystery puzzle pieces that were needed be solved in order to be sent to a full flamboyant blast with special effects, pure chaos and horror finale. If you're telling me that this movie has faults and flaws which weren't mentioned in this review, I would completely agree with you. But me, my wife and all of the viewers at the premiere screening, we had so much fun. We were laughing and cheering for the Holy Spirit to exorcise the bloody demon. A must-see movie for horror fans. Inspired by rather than a retelling of a particular story does of course give the script writers and filmmakers far more freedom to do what they want rather than being trapped by the constraints of a story like the Amityville Horror. The story starts along the same lines as The Conjuring, 
the remote location, the family newly moving into the property to start afresh but this moves the location from Outback USA to Outback Spain. It's a neat move as it allows the scripts to focus on elements such as the Spanish Inquisition, the Catholic Church and more and keep the story grounded in some semblance of history and mythology surrounding religion. Russell Crowe does a great job as a wise, weary priest the Pope's own appointed exorcist, and alongside the local Spanish priest who unsurprisingly has no idea how to deal with a possession within his own community, the pair work together well. Their scenes are reminiscent of the pairing from The Exorcist 1973, with the older, knowledgeable one guiding the younger, more reticent one who believes but doesn't quite fully believe what is going on. The pacing of the story works well. The young actor playing the possessed boy deserves multiple supporting actor awards as he really carries the underlying feel of tension and threat. It all builds up to a satisfying climatic conclusion and comes recommended for anyone wanting a little more of the same with a modern take on how to present it all. The film turns in a new direction compared to most three-cent horror films. The film does not focus too much on jump scare but focuses on each character's emotions when being invaded by fear. I am very impressed with the plot. In addition to the cool and funny Father Gabriel character, the rest of the characters are also very well built. If you want a movie full of jump scare then this is not the movie for you, and if you want a jump scare movie that is just enough and has a compelling plot for you to enjoy then this is the movie for you. Applause for the cast and crew. Don't let the fools keep you from enjoying this movie. They're just kids who like jump scare and don't like the humor in, horror, movies. The movie is just good enough for the viewer to feel comfortable. Personally, I really enjoyed this movie P.S. The book is very good. I'm a bit unsure about whether The Pope's Exorcist is supposed to be a serious film or a parody, the cast play it absolutely straight with little evidence of star Russell Crowe having his tongue in cheek, but the whole thing is so cheesy at times that it's hard to see how it could possibly be taken as anything but a knowingly daft pastiche of the genre. If you decide to go see the film, I suggest you don't take it too seriously. Crow plays Father Gabriel Amorth, chief exorcist of the Vatican, appointed by the Pope to deal with cases of demonic possession. Amorth is sent to Spain to investigate the case of a young boy, Henry Peter de Souza Fagoni, doing a hilarious imitation of Linda Blair, who is acting most peculiarly. When the priest arrives, it's time for director Julius Avery to lay on the cliches that have been serving horror filmmakers, many of them Italian, well for the past 50 years. Guttural voices, levitation, rotating heads, vomiting, writing appearing on the body in welts, etc., etc. The demon causing all the trouble turns out to be none other than Asmodeus, one of the kings of hell under Lucifer the emperor. So he's a bit powerful. But Amorth is no slouch when it comes to such matters and, with the help of Spanish priest Father Esquibel, Daniel Zobito, he engages the hell spawn in a battle of good versus evil which involves an exploding naked chick covered in blood and an appearance by the Virgin Mary. The film is not exactly groundbreaking stuff, exorcist rip-offs aren't exactly hard to come by, and there are moments that had me laughing out loud Crow's mouth transforming into a gaping ma is hilariously bad but I was never bored. I'm going to be generous and give the Pope's Exorcist six tenths not essential viewing, but do we honestly think that David Gordon Green's The Exorcist remake, due out later this year, will be any better? The Pope's Exorcist, may not be considered as the best exorcism movie of all time, but it certainly stands out from the rest that have tried to explore this intriguing subject in recent years. This film claims to be, inspired by Vatican files, and although the degree of factual accuracy may be up for debate, it delivers a gripping and engaging possession story that keeps the audience on the edge of their seats. The true highlight of this film is undoubtedly the performance of Russell Crowe, who delivers a powerful and nuanced portrayal of his character. Crowe's charisma and sense of humor bring an added dimension to the movie, making his character both likable and believable. It's refreshing to see such a talented actor take on an unconventional role like this one, and he does not disappoint. The story itself is a breath of fresh air from the run of the mill exorcism movies that have flooded the market in recent years. The dialogues are well written and natural, delivered with a nice dose of humor. The soundtrack is fitting, and the cinematography and locations are a feast for the eyes. The practical effects and gore add a touch of old school horror, which is always welcome. Sure, 
The digital special effects may not be perfect in a few scenes, but this does not detract from the overall quality of the film. The Pope's Exorcist manages to keep viewers thoroughly entertained throughout its runtime, and that's what matters most. If you are looking for something different, then this film is worth checking out. Two thumbs up for this one. A boy is possessed by a powerful demon when the family shifts into their newly inherited mansion, built over hallowed ground. It is the chief exorcist of the Vatican to save this family while uncovering the dark secret behind this demon in that mansion. Based on the experiences of a real-life exorcist, the Pope's exorcist tries to be this decade's new conjuring but it doesn't have enough meat in it to be one. The story is pretty basic and so are the scares but what it lacks is properly establishing the characters. It begins so haphazardly, I for one couldn't care less for the family moving into the new mansion. Sure, there was a personal loss involved, a rebellious teenager and a traumatized boy. Even a mother who can fight back a demon to get back her kids safely. But those initial scenes fail to create any concern for the family. It does however show promise with the mystery behind the demon as the priests try to figure out its name and uncover a dirty Vatican secret. The film somehow revived itself in the second act but the all too generic third act, ensured the Pope's exorcist was nothing more than an ordinary watch. Russell Crowe gave his best to carry the film forward but even he can do only so much with a screenplay that doesn't try to rise above the routine stuff. Wow what a boring, bland piece of demonic trash. Almost nothing happens this entire movie that takes place in basically one setting. Every trope ever conceived in an exorcism movie is on full display, but in the most bland way possible. It's as if the director doesn't know how to orchestrate tension because there was zero. The demon was an absolute joke with little to no power. All the demon would do was stay tied to the bed and yell terribly written expletives that you would hear a nine-year-old yell in an Xbox Live lobby. The only somewhat redeeming, entertaining factor of this movie was Russell Crowe in an extremely random role. Still, they didn't let Crowe chew the scenery enough because the director probably wanted to keep the vibe of the movie, dark and horrifying, though it was most definitely neither. There was also a terrible part during the finale where Crowe and his sidekick pull out their crosses for one last chance at beating the demon. I kid you not, when they pulled out the crosses, they made a high-pitched, power-up, noise, as if the crosses were charging up a power attack. What an absolute joke. I can't believe all the people giving this dumpster fire a 9 or 10. That's just complete disrespect to cinema and you should be thrown to the depths of hell for such blasphemy. 3.510. Finally a good scary movie to save 2023, Russell always being one of the bests. I love when the movie bring us lines to reflect and well, just perfect. Good story construction, brought me to tears a few times, so close to reality in some points, and a good makeup crew, but again, Russell carried the movie on his shoulders and did not disappoint. Good scenarios, good clothes, script is impeccable, and I love how the interactions of the church are shown in the movie, in a way closer to reality. Always loved a good exorcism movie and this one did not disappoint me for a single minute. I'm leaving the theater with happiness. The Pope's Exorcist. That's a beautiful pig. Only the best, Father. Chief Vatican Exorcist Father Gabriele Amorth, Russell Crowe, uses poor scene props as he casts out demons Gadarene swine style in Italy in 1987. But 98% of, possessions, are due to mental illness he explains to a Vatican panel afterwards. He puts an arrogant young U.S. Cardinal in his place, reminding him that only the Pope issues orders to Amorth. Indeed the Pope JPII sends a morph to Spain where an American mother, teen daughter and young son are having troubles in an old abbey the mother was having restored. This is a stock family, caring worried mother, sullen teen who doesn't want to be there but the boy, Henry Peter de Souza Fagoni, shines as he becomes the subject of a demon's attention. Some great scenes of horror as the possessed child tosses priests through doors, chokes people and causes poltergeist effects. Also alarming is the way the demon tempts and taunts those around him with memories of their past sins and failures. We even get the spider walk, but something far more sinister is going on. The Pope Franco Nero researches old documents regarding the Abbey's history whilst Amorth is his field commander in the fight against Satan. Crow has an endearing, humorous style as he portrays Amorth, wisecracking, irreverent, fond of coffee and the odd nip of whiskey. 
De Souza Fagoni deftly goes through a demanding performance as the possessed boy with Ralph Innocent voicing the demon. My favorite scene was the Pope projectile vomiting blood on the U.S. Cardinal. A lot more fiction than fact here but it's a highly entertaining horror film even if it would have been better with a 90-minute running time rather than 103. Directed by Julius Avery, from a screenplay by Michael Petroni and Evan Speliotopoulos based on Amort's memoirs An Exorcist tells his story and An Exorcist, more stories. 7.510